Biobalance HealthCast, episode 277, Pregnenolone, the mother of steroid hormones. Biobalance HealthCast features conversations about positive aging. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Maupin, medical director of Biobalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. So, Dr. Moffin, when I first met you, you <laughs> described yourself to me in, in a joking manner. You said, I am known as the hormone queen of St. Louis. And I was like, so why? What's that all about? I guess that could mean a lot of things. And Because I, I knew you were a gynecologist. Mm-hmm. And you delivered babies. You did surgeries. And you had a 30-year career in a practice in gynecology. But as I learned more about you, what I learned was that you were shifting away from a focus in gynecology to a focus of hormone replacement as you studied endocrinology Mm -hmm. and anti-aging issues in medicine. Mm -hmm. So hormones is the thing you do, are the thing you do, and it's what you know. (laughs) And you're teaching me a lot, and you're teaching Mm -hmm. your patients a lot about hormone, Mm -hmm. and especially about hormone replacements. we wrote a science chapter for our book about the whole hormone system, and our publisher said, mm, "Don't put that in there." But we put it up on on your website because <laughs> they thought it was too, you know, too scientific. scientific. Yeah, and so one of the hormones, fundamental building blocks, as they all are, but one of the hormones that I don't know anything about, and you started talking about it, I'm like, "Oh, that's interesting," and trying to find an analogy that helps me because I think. Uh, by analogy, how do I understand this? Is the hormone pregnenolone. Right. And Men and women both have it, so it's not pregnancy hormone. It's it's, pregnenolone. It has nothing to do with pregnancy. Right. But it's a fundamental building block from which all the other hormones are steroid, made. The other steroid hormones, hormones are made. Derive. There, there are two kinds of hormones, so, amino acids, proteins, and steroids. So explain so. to me pregnenolone. <laughs> okay. Pregnenolone is made in the adrenal gland from cholesterol. Cholesterol is very important for us. I mean, really. It's not all bad. It's not all bad. It's, it makes up our cell walls and it makes many of our hormones, all, all of our steroid hormones, meaning estrogen, testosterone, cortisol, uh, mineralocorticoids like aldosterone, um, Glucocorticoids. DHEA, that's, that's cortisol, glucocorticoids, mm-hmm. um, are all made out of cholesterol, and then if you can visualize this, I'll do it this way, you, cholesterol, then there's several enzyme reactions that break up the structure of cholesterol to make it into pregnenolone. And several hormones are in between So it's kind of like an NBA bracket. Yeah, it is. In like reverse. An, yeah. It is. From the championship back down to the... It is, because thing. pregnenolone... The, the way they show it in a book, it kind of goes this way and this way. It makes right. several different changes, and each change requires an enzyme to go from this mother of all steroid hormones to each of the hormones that we need in our life. So this is a very basic process. Pregnenolone makes um, in the adrenal gland can make cortisol directly make cortisol and aldosterone, which goes out to the bloodstream. It can then also make DHEA. Okay, DHEA goes to the ovary and testicle to make testosterone. It can also make an estrogen, goes to the ovary that makes more estradiol. And it makes progesterone when pregnenolone goes to the ovary. It makes progesterone there and a little bit's made in the adrenal. It also goes directly to your brain crosses the blood-brain barrier as pregnenolone, and stimulates neurotransmitters. So All the little hormones in your brain that make you think. You eat food, that becomes cholesterol. Yeah, fat. see, that's why it's important to have cholesterol foods, right. which are usually animal product foods, usually, okay. usually. that are then trans- broken down and transported to the bloodstream, and the adrenal pulls it from the bloodstream. So... Pregnenolone comes out of the As cholesterol. The, in the adrenal gland, it's made. In the adrenal gland. Then that shoots off and goes to a half a dozen other glands. Right. Or organs. Or organs. And in each of those glands or organs, that raw material 
is transduced or transposed into a different product. Right. It works by enzymes. They cut off like one. If you look at a chemical chemical, chemical chain, chain yeah. it's like all these carbons with these little side chains, and it cleaves off this with an enzyme, and it becomes something else. Yeah. And then it cleaves off something else, and then it becomes something else. It's, it's the same process as we use yams to make estrogen and testosterone. So we do that cleaving process mm -hmm. to make those hormones out of a plant, okay. which is interesting since it's not an animal product. Right. So, the uh, but the basically the it's like cooking. If I have if I'm going to make bread, and I I want it to rise. Actually, most breads are made out of some kind of flour. Usually wheat flour, but not Self, all. Shelf rising flour. So, some kind of flour, and you use yeast as a chemical reaction to, and then you have to also put it into an oven, like put sending it to another gland to actually rise. And you have to put other things in it to chemically come together to make bread. Mm -hmm. So basically we're doing that inside our body all day long from the time we're born till the time we die. We're making all of these hormones and we don't have to think about it. We don't know what's happening. So, so if you buy all purpose flour at the grocery store, that's not enough. <laughs> that's had those ingredients put in it already by not the all manufacturer. Of them. Not all of them. Although I'm not a chef. All purpose flour means you can make anything out of it. Right. And it doesn't mean that it's got yeast in it. it doesn't have well, yeast in it. it. You have to put yeast in it. You have to put sugar in it for the yeast to grow on. You have, I mean, you have to put other things. Mm hmm. I don't even, I mean, I'm sitting here going, when was the last time I made bread? <laughs> uh, <laughs> when I was yes. in med school and we couldn't buy bread, we made it. So, right. you know, so, um, so basically you have to put other things in it to make the chemical reaction occur. Right. I've got this great book called the science of cooking. It's so much fun for me since I'm, I'm into, or have been trained in science right. and it explains why you have to use eggs or why you have to use yeast or what you can substitute for like baking powder, baking right. soda, why you use one versus the other. They're different chemical reactions. All of cooking is chemistry. But, but that's an analogy. That's an analogy that we use and you do every, other people do every day. Right, right, right. And that, that is what your body's doing all day long. It's taking your food and making it into a particular food is being made into your hormones. Okay. And it's it's an amazing process how you cannot believe in God after you've watched all of these. I mean, I could use an entire wall and draw all of these little interactions. I still wouldn't get them all. Yeah. And they take place in all different parts of our body and do many different functions. And they all come together to make us who we are. Yeah. So... This, this is what pregnenolone is, this is the flower. Pregnenolone is the first step after our food, cholesterol. And then when we take, pregnenolone then becomes through enzymatic changes in different areas of your body into the hormones we need. So okay. when people say pregnenolone does blank, 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 which I'm going to, as a list, I'm terrible at lists, so I'm going to use as yeah. my, um, it improves sleep. It improves um, your thought processes, how you think, how fast you think. They think it is good for people with dementia. Um, and that's a direct activity on the brain, mm -hmm. is, is not through a hormone, but through directly acting on the neurotransmitters in your brain. It improves mood. It increases serotonin and dopamine to improve your mood, Again, your happiness in the brain. In the brain. Mm -hmm. um, it relieves some symptoms of schizophrenia. And many people who are schizophrenic have very low levels of pregnenolone. Okay. And so when they give them pregnenolone back, or and, and it's easy, it's oral actually, you can take an oral pill, then... Um, and it's over the counter. It's, it's over the counter. You can go buy it at... at over the counter is better than store, even yeah. generic because... Yeah. You can you can buy it at, at the proper dose and then increase it a little bit. It's five milligrams a day, mm -hmm. so um, you can supplement this. Um, it improves energy. Now that's through the process of it making DHEA and then making testosterone. Right. So that improves energy. It also improves energy through cortisol. That improves your energy, your ability to handle stress. So so if I'm losing testosterone as a as a function of aging. Mm -hmm. Instead of giving me testosterone, why wouldn't you give me pregnenolone, which would then make the testosterone and make the other stuff that I might be uh, falling back on as well? Because 
when we we decrease the the uh, substrate, the initial the initial uh, amount of pregnenolone, right. But we also decrease the effectiveness of the factory that makes testosterone. So pregnenolone can only be up so much right. to make the testicles make more testosterone or make the ovary make more testosterone. So in men, the, the testicles continually throughout their lives still make testosterone, mm -hmm. but it just drops in, in amount. You can dose somebody who's 60 with pregnenolone, and it still won't make enough testosterone to make a difference. It will... It, It'll max out? Well, the factory is not working very well. The factory closes down as we get older, so it's making less and less no matter how much substrate or how much um, precursor you give it. It just piles up outside, basically, and you can't make the testosterone out of it. Your testicle's not working. So if you have a factory so, that makes widgets and you keep bringing in the raw materials, but the machinery inside the widget factory is, can only is make so many out, right can make only so many then widgets. Their ability to produce widgets decreases no matter how much raw material you right. bring. Right, that's right. So, so that so maybe somebody who's forty, some guy who's forty and is feeling like they need some more testosterone, adding pregnenolone mm -hmm. might bump them up to enough for the next few years to feel better. But somebody who's sixty. Or 50, some guy who's 50 or 60, it's not going to work. Now, here's what happens with women. Our factories shut down. Mm -hmm. We make, I mean, there may be a trickle of testosterone that comes out of the ovary after menopause and even less estrogen. But basically, our ovaries, when I've, I, I operated for almost 30 years, and you look at ovaries that used to be this big, and now they're little tiny raisins. Yeah. They're done. There's hardly any blood flow to them. They're still alive, but they're not doing anything. So basically, you could give pregnenolone to women who ha who have menopause or who aren't making enough testosterone, and it isn't going to work. Right. It's not. It's just going to pile up outside. The factory's not there. The and raw material sits outside. And so what what happens when when I give somebody testosterone? They need it. They have very little. No matter what I do with uh, manipulating their other hormones, they don't make any more. Right. Then they have plenty of testosterone. They feel great in all those ways, but they still can't think. Mm -hmm. Then I'll give them pregnenolone, but I'm not going to overdose them on pregnenolone because it will make it will go to your brain, and they'll use it'll use as much as your body will use as much as you need right. for your brain. But it's not going to push the testosterone anymore because you have plenty. It's a feedback system. Your body goes, I've got enough, so it does not make testosterone out of pregnenolone. It will make estrone, which is make, gives you belly fat and man boobs. So we'll just run through and top off all the, the steroid hormones. Right. And once they're all topped off, it's excreted. It's like when you're putting gas in your car. Right, but you can make some steroid hormones you don't want. Right. So it could make. Right. So instead of making testosterone, it goes in and goes, oh, got I don't want to make plenty more estrogen. Of, plenty of testosterone, it's going to make estrone. Yeah. Or it's going to make dihydrotestosterone, which then causes balding and prostate enlargement. So you don't want those other two things. So pushing it to the limit's not a good idea. Just like anything else in the human body, you don't want to you don't want to overdo it. Right. There are lots of people who who thrive on overdoing everything, running or eating or not eating or, you know, or mm -hmm. supplements. This is not something that you should overdo or you're going to make a lot of things well, I think that's really in your body that you don't want. Yes. So, and I rarely give people pregnenolone unless they are having trouble with mood or they can't think after I've gotten them to a good level of testosterone. Okay. And estrogen. So you get those critical hormones for functioning in libido balanced where they need to be. Mm -hmm. And then if there's any extra wiggle room, pregnenolone can help. It can help. But you have to be careful about it and you don't over prescribe it. You, you don't take it as the solution to everything. Right. It's not going to be the solution to everything as we get older. Sadly, we can't reopen the factory by giving pregnenolone. We can't increase its production. Okay. So it just it is it becomes um, the receptor sites become immune to the stimulation. Wow. So so it just won't increase production. So that's I mean that's not a good thing. Mm -hmm. But I mean for younger men that would be a good thing or for younger women who are on the edge of 
losing their testosterone, it might help them for a period of time. But once you've stopped making it to a great extent, you're not going to be able to bump it with pregnenolone. A couple other things it helps, mm -hmm. it, which I thought was really interesting. It, it helps with people's addictions. As we age and as we do bad things to our bodies, we lose dopamine. So this stimulates dopamine. So by taking pregnenolone, even if you're already taking testosterone, it should help with addictions mm -hmm. because addictions are, uh, are to replace dopamine with a drug. So replacing it with a very safe hormone mm -hmm. is a better alternative. So they treat a lot of people with that, uh, with um, addictions that way. But joint pain, PMS, menopause, um, and all of the symptoms that go along with low T, they're they all are secondary to pregnenolone in a young, healthy body. Mm -hmm. But as we age, more pregnenolone won't always replace it. That's why I have to go to the next step. Right. Otherwise, I would just give people pregnenolone. Right. I wouldn't give them testosterone. It would be so much easier. Because it's a, it's a universal. If you just gave me the pregnenolone, it would impact my testosterone, but it would also impact my estrogen. It would impact my uh, other hormones mm -hmm. that I may not want impacted because of the secondary effects of those hormones. Right. That's right. And one of the other things is sometimes I see people, I've never seen a woman with this, but I've seen um, several men with very low cholesterol, mm -hmm. very low, like too low, 130 or 120 on their own, very low LDLs, very low HDLs. All of their cholesterols are low and they're not without eating cholesterol based foods. I mean, they, they eat properly. It's just their body doesn't make a lot. Uh -huh. And they traditionally have low testosterone levels. So because there's not enough cholesterol to, to make the testosterone. So they could even be young people. And so in this case, it might be helpful to use pregnenolone with the testosterone to their, their factory still open. You know, so they so use both to try to bring them up to speed. Right. And uh, if they if their body won't make it in the, it, it's made in the liver out of our food. So if it won't make it, there's no way that I know of. Maybe somebody out there does to make your cholesterol higher. Right. But this would be a good answer for those people to fill in the blanks of all the other hormones that I'm not giving them. From having more cholesterol. Cholesterol to pregnenolone to the other hormones that that I can't replace. Yeah. So that would be a, a really good idea. The other is in my patients who don't get their memory back. They've been without testosterone for so long, usually over 10 years. They um, they just can't think like they used to. <laughs> well, pregnenolone helps them with word recall and and quickness of thought and problem solving. And I, ca I call it the duh factor. The duh. Like, the duh. And nothing's clicking. Mm -hmm. You know, you're trying to find the answer or something. You're waiting for it to pop into your head. That actually can be caused by a deficiency of these hormones. That's right. And if you, especially with pregnenolone, mm -hmm. if your testosterone and estrogen are balanced where you want them, your progesterone is balanced where you want mm -hmm. all these other things that you balance, and you still are having more duh than you want to have, then pregnenolone would be a place that you could go because mm -hmm. it's over the counter. You could get it. You could see if that would make a difference. You start with five milligrams. And then you slowly work your way up to 10. Mm. And if, if you're better on five, stay there. But if after a week or two on five, you still feel like you could use some more quickness of thought or recall, right. then you can cut it in half and take one and a half for a couple weeks. And then that's not enough. Then you can go up to two. I wouldn't go past two. And I would encourage you not to do this without consulting your physician. I know a lot of people that think they're pharmacists and think they're doctors and they read stuff on the internet or they talk to their buddies at work. You have to find a doctor who understands what pregnenolone is and what it does. And that's the biggest problem. So the guy that, on the assembly not, line next to you is probably not going to be the resource for that. No, I mean, this is not, I learned this from the um, age management med medical group and the A4M age, anti-aging doctors. So, but I, so you have to find somebody within that group that would understand what pregnenolone even is. So the point being, that even though it's an over-the-counter thing that you can get, if you think, okay, my mental acuity is not where I want it to be, I'm not as sharp and I'm, I'm getting testosterone in place, I'm getting my estrogen balance, don't take stuff without talking to your physician about it and see what And if you have one of those mental disorders, I think actually... 
psychiatrists know a lot about hormones and neurotransmitters, they may be the, mm. the person to ask, would pregnenolone help me? So that that would be a good place to go for for some of the mental disorders. If you have. So and and I you know, we all have a little depression here and there. That's not what I'm talking about. Yeah. <laughs> real mental you know real mental disorders you have to take medication for. So it could de- help you decrease medication. All right. Thank you for listening. Thank you. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance Healthcast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. Find Brett Newcomb at brettnewcomb.com.